Hi guys, Tim here, and it's that time of year. Yep, it's winter. So here in the UK, the gritters will be out soon. They'll be throwing grit and salt and all nastiness all over the road and up against the side of your Mark II. So if you've been with the channel for a while, at least a year, you'll know that it's this time of year that I like to take the Mark IIs off the road and lock them up in the barn to do some work over the winter. But that means that I need a car to get around in. Now, last year, I introduced you to the 80 pound Seat Ibiza and as, as you'll have seen, that didn't go well. But look, that car is still with us and you'll be pleased to know it's actually back on the road and I did think about driving it this winter. But then I had the opportunity to buy something which I think, to be honest, for a thousand pounds is probably the best budget winter car you can buy. Now it's a really underrated modern classic. It's on the verge of being an appreciating modern classic and it comes with an amazing set of toys. Now it's got four wheel drive, a turbocharged engine, it's got climate control, heated seats. You know what? I think these cars are amazing. They're really underrated. And to be honest, a lot of people are actually quite rude about them. But guys, let me introduce you to my budget winter car for this year. Now you may have guessed it, you may not, but I have actually gone out and got myself a Mark I Audi TT. Now, I think these are great cars and um, and yeah, they come under a, they, they come under fire quite a lot for being a hairdresser's car, for not being a really good sports car. But actually, do you know what? They're a lot of fun and they're really cheap. So you can pick these up for anywhere between sort of 700 to around 2000 pounds for a decent 1.8 turbo. Um, they did them in the 3.2 V6, so the same engine as the R32, and they're really starting to creep up in value. You're probably looking anywhere between 3,000 for an automatic and anything up to six or seven for a really clean manual. But as you know, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, I do not like spending money. So this certainly did not cost anywhere close to three to 7,000 pounds. It's a 1.8 turbo. This car actually, in a weird series of events, I bought for about, 300 pounds so what does 300 pounds get you um well this was actually sat in a field for about a year um it had a smoky turbo and a whole host of other issues wrong with it but let's actually have a look and see what we've got now as i mentioned these things are fully loaded so if you look at it here it's got 18 inch alloy wheels it's got the 312 mil front brakes as we go down here, you'll see it's quite common on these. We've got a bit of a ding in the sill, but we'll ignore that. Now coming around to the back, because this is a 180 brake horsepower version, it's got the non-vented rear discs. So um, it's quite good because it means if the calipers need replacing, because these often tend to stick, it means they're nice and cheap instead of having to go for the more expensive Leon Cooper R or 225. Now, as we come around to the back of the car, you can see here that this one has actually got a twin Scorpion exhaust on the back. So this would have originally come from factory with a single exhaust tip because it's a 180 brake horsepower model. And as we look around the rest of the car, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, the wheels could do with a refurb, obviously but the paintwork it's a bit flat and a bit dull where it's been sat but actually with a clean it looks okay now the headlights are a little bit um, a little bit hazy to most they could do with a polish and as you'll see it's a 2003 03 plate so it's one of the later ones now as we look inside the car again you'll see what i mean these are a great place to be especially in the winter so looking at what we've got now inside we've got a full leather interior now most of these came with leather um, there's some that came with half leather alcantara seats and i think maybe the 150 brake horsepower might have come with a cloth interior um, the 150 brakes aren't four wheel drive they are just a golf in drag or or a beetle i mean these things get compared to uh looking like a beetle quite often so if you're going to buy one of these, you want the four wheel drive. So it's 180 brake or the 225. Um, and obviously they do the 3.2, as I said. But anyway, what have we got in here? So looking inside, we've got a rather cool looking dash. Now, there's a couple of lines missing on the display here. That's quite common for this. This one actually isn't that bad. 
and the motors on the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge often go as well so you can see here that these all work so that's good it's got some lines missing on the display i don't know that it's worth taking it out and getting that repaired but if you wanted to it's easily done so look down here we've got heated seats yes look now this is why along with the four-wheel drive it's a great winter car so we've got heated seats we've also got climate control so you can be nice and toasty in the winter now you notice here that this is this is snapped off so um, actually these covers are easy to replace so obviously it's quite a cool looking interior i mean this color isn't to everyone's taste and it does certainly show up the dirt and the wear in this uh sort of biscuity brown mustard color um, but yeah otherwise it's it's not a bad place to be now i'm sure you're all saying at this point tim if you bought that for 400 300 pounds it must have been an absolute wrong one. and yes you'd think i would have learned my lesson buying shit boxes to drive over the winter but i don't know was it a clever move um have i got issues well, it depends who you talk to. Now, we've had to do some work to this car to get it on the road for winter. Now, obviously, as I said before, the turbo was smoking. So we got a Max Peeling Rods K04001, and it's fitted to this car. Um, other than the intake being a little larger, so we had to fit a silicon tip, um, it went straight on, so that was good news. So it's quite common that the turbos go on these. And if you're looking at a 700-pound Audi TT, they've usually all got smoky turbos at that sort of price range um also another common issue with these is the cv boots inner and outer on the front drive shaft split and again this had um this had that as well so we had to replace the drive shafts because it's easier than just replacing the boots to be honest you can buy a complete ready-made drive shaft from jr drive shafts i don't know it's on ebay look them up um for i think it was about 110 pounds the pair so again an easy fix and pretty much routine maintenance but where this had been just literally dumped in a field the owner had had enough parked it up and just decided enough was enough and just left it so we've done the drive shafts we've done the turbo it's also we've changed the camp out water pump because again just it's got service history and it was actually done but it was done probably 10 years ago so well overdue so that's been done as well so other than giving it an oil and filter change and a wash that was pretty much it so all told this has cost me probably 750 to 900 pounds somewhere in that ballpark um and you know what i think it's a pretty good car for the money um obviously worst comes to the worst i drive it for the three four five months over the winter and then i've got a 1.8 turbo engine for a mark ii conversion that i know is good because we've done the cam belt we've done the water pump we've done the turbo so actually it's ready to go into a mark ii other than that i could sell it on after christmas um and get my money back out of it now this one's a 180 brake horsepower model these things with us stage one remap an air filter or an induction kit and an exhaust you're looking sort of anywhere close to sort of 210 so again they're really good fun for not much money um, and the good thing is to be honest if it's still on the road the chances are it's already had a stage one remap at some point again these being a 180 they're really easy to mod and as you'll see from this this is certainly no slouch So when you look at what we've got, we've got ourselves a pretty decent little winter hack to run around in. Um, we've done the, the things that are hopefully gonna cause us some issues, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So fingers crossed, we've got ourselves some carefree winter driving for not much money. Now, we do get snow here in the UK, so the four wheel drive could come in really useful. Or after Christmas in the new year, 
I could strip the seats out, put some bucket seats and harnesses in it and smash it around the track for a bit of fun. So either way, we've got a car here that doesn't owe us a huge amount of money um, with a load of different possibilities, a cheap track car, a donor car for a Mark II, or I could even sell it on and, uh, and recoup my money and hopefully a little bit of profit. Now we've got ourselves a cheap little winter motor for under a thousand pounds. And I guess the question is, should you? Well, uh, it depends what you want out of it. If you want something to drive around for three to six months that's cheap and easy to get along with, um, and after those six months, you're not really that worried. Do you break it, get your money back out of it? Do you put your engine in a Mark II, sell the rest of the bits, get your money back out of it? or? Do you just sell it on or do you run it around as a cheap track car? There's so many possibilities with these things and that's why they're so great. Um, but yeah, probably buying one of these at the cheaper end of the scale for a winter run around is not gonna do you any favors. I mean, sure, you could buy a 700, 800 pound one with a smoky turbo, just a little bit of blue smoke, but enough to fail its next MOT. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could have some fun over the winter or, do you buy one for maybe 11, 1200 pounds that's been looked after, that's got maybe some service history and isn't smoking, has had the drive shafts replaced and has got a fairly long MOT on it? I mean, guys, I mean, it's, it's entirely up to you. I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you take your Mark II off the road for winter? Do you, um, you know, would you buy a TT? Do you think it's a great, undervalued, underrated modern classic? Or do you think there's a reason that loads of these get broken? So, um, but anyway, I think this is me for the winter. So um, I'm gonna take this home. It's just out of clean, because it was filthy inside, having been in a field for a year. And then, yeah, I'm gonna get myself together and we're gonna head up the barn. So I'm on my way up the barn. Sam's called me and it's my turn to get the coffees. So. Normally, that wouldn't be too much of a problem, but the Audi TT doesn't have a cup holder. Well, actually, it did, but as you can see down here, um, I sold it. Yeah, so that's kind of how you might be thinking, Tim, how did you buy a TT for £300? Well, actually, it's because it did have a cup holder, and I sold it to my mate, who's also got a TT, for £100, which is generally the going rate for these things. Um, it had all the bits it was all in perfect condition so yeah 100 pounds was kind of about the right price for it so it meant this car that kind of was up for sale for 400 after selling the cup holder cost me 300 pounds which isn't too bad but as you can see the queue is massive and i'm sat here a nice toasty 23 and a half degrees the heated seat is on so when i get to the barn i'm probably not going to want to get out because it is really cold it's yeah, 15 degrees outside, so it's not ideal. It is not 22 minutes past four. I just haven't changed the clock. So I'm gonna have to grab these coffees, risk scolding my balls, because frankly, I don't know where else to put them in this car. Um, hopefully Sam will be here pretty quickly. If he can meet me at Starbucks, then I'm not gonna need to worry about driving with it. So yeah, let's have a look. We'll get these coffees and then we'll get up the barn. Right, so coffee done, we're on our way. Um, I've swapped over, I'm in Sam's car, he's in a TT, giving a little road test to see what he thinks. Right, so now we're at the barn. Um, we're having a quick look at the Ibiza. We've got to do one of the front bushes and also got to do the fuel cooler because I managed to smash that off the other day as well. But while we're, while we're here, we're gonna do one last thing. So yeah, we're going to uh, just jack the TT up and have a little look and just see, actually, is this a good idea? Could we make the best budget winter car even better for the winter? Well, let's have a look. So before we do it, have you got any idea what we're doing? We're gonna have a look and see if it will work. So we got clearance. So 
So it looks like an all-terrain tire fits on a TT on a 16 inch wheel. But I did see you can get a 30 mil lift kit for these. So Sam, what would that look like? So what do you think? Would that make the best winter car for a thousand pounds even better? With some all-terrain tires and a 30 mil lift kit. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Guys, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.